Hey everybody and welcome to another tutorial brought to you by the Minecrafters. I'm Captain Jack and in this episode we are going to be covering the steam turbine and the three different kinds of railcraft steam engines. Alright, let's go ahead and take a look at the steam turbine first. The steam turbine is going to be a very costly block to make. It's going to take 160 steel to make the uh, total turbine housings needed, plus an additional 139 steel to craft the rotor, um, and that's going to equal 259 steel total for this machine. So, it's going to be very costly. Um, uh, I would suggest doing it only if you know that you have enough resources. The first thing you're going to have to make is a steam turbine housing, and that's going to take four blocks of steel, four steel plate, and that's going to give you three steam turbine housings. Now, this is a three by two by two multi-block so you're going to need um, four of these recipes to get the proper amount so there we go 12 of them we're gonna go ahead and put this down right here bum, bum, boom, bum, bum, boom, bum, bum, boom. we're gonna uh, bury our sign there because we don't need to look at it anymore and we're gonna take a look at what else we need to put inside of here because the rotor which is empty right here um, uh, is something that we're gonna need to put inside of here in order to make this machine work and right now we're at output zero percent Let's take a look at how to make the rotor. The actual rotor, which is called a turbine rotor, is going to take three turbine disks to make. And the turbine disks take one block of steel and eight turbine blades. And the turbine blades take three steel in a shapeless crafting grid just like this. So this is going to be an extremely resource-intensive block to make. But uh, if you have tons of steel, probably going to be worth it. Um, well, maybe. I'm really skeptical about this block to be honest with you that's why I'm doing it first anyways we have our multi block here looks kinda cool on the sides and uh, we're not getting any output so let's go ahead and grab one of these rotor turbines and put it right inside of there and you can see that it's gonna start to try to um, output some energy um, but it can't output any energy unless we have it hooked up to some kind of cable and uh, this block is only going to produce IC2 power. You can't actually connect redstone conduit to it. Um, you see that connects right there. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and just put a IDSU on there. And uh, we're going to notice that this is uh, hovering around 27%. And uh, that's just, just because I only have one liquiduct pumping into this block. And it's very similar to the boiler multi-blocks. Um, the liquiducts have a limitation. You can only pump so much steam through them. So if I add a few more... Uh, -boo -boo, and actually change the output of this to the correct thing. We're going to get right around um, 45, 46, 47. It's going to keep going up. Maybe we'll get to 50. Uh, it's trying, it's trying, it's trying. Okay, not quite there. So it looks like you're going to need about four liquiducts to get all the way up to 100%. We can uh, see that happening if I go ahead and do this, I believe. And uh, let's connect two here, too. Miss this one. Okay. Okay, so it's going to run up to about uh, 100. It's going to get there in just one second. And these are going to output a total of 200 EU per tick. Um, and we will see that in action as we look here. Now, I'm going to destroy these because we're not going to need this anymore. This was just for an example of how to build it. Um, you can pipe fluid into the turbine via pipe or by placing it directly next to the boiler, which is um, probably preferable. It kind of looks pretty neat, and you don't need uh, extra piping all over the place. So uh, you can actually place them just like this, and the steam will go directly from the boiler into the steam turbine. Let's take a look at a few facts about this real quick. Full-size boilers can produce a little over 700 steam per tick. So uh, 700 divided by 320, which is the amount that these things need to operate at 100%, is going to equal 2.19. So you can power effectively two of these constantly um, without losing any steam and without losing any power. You can attach a third one to it and uh, it will produce a bit of extra steam for about um, two minutes. You'll uh, get 600 EU per tick out of all three of them to combined, um, but that's going to eventually drop off when the steam in the boiler hits the halfway point and you are still going to only get 400 EU per tick at that point. If I go ahead and take this out, you're going to notice that the output is going to drop to 200. There we go, down to 200. If I put it back in, we're going to get the full 400 out of these two steam turbines. So putting it right next to the um, boiler, whatever kind you have, is uh, probably recommended, although you can store steam and pipe it anywhere you want. 
Um, the turbine will take up to uh, 300. Uh, we said that already. Um, produce 200 EU per tick, and the rotor, the rotor, the rotor will slowly take damage and will need to be repaired. So you see, when I checked inside of here, um, there's a little green damage indicator, and it says 780, um, 785, 780, 7805, um, colon 52, and uh, that's going to slowly rise and the rise and rise until eventually this thing breaks. They're just bumped up to 54. And depending on which version of Railcraft you have installed, this is going to last anywhere from 81 hours to 40 hours. And I believe the oldest version lasts 81, the middle version lasts about 60 something, and the very newest version lasts about 40 hours, which is still a really long time, um, but can you can go through them pretty quick, especially if uh, you're running these on a server that's constantly chunk loaded, okay? The good news is you don't have to keep making uh, turbine rotors. Every time uh, these things break, you can go ahead and put them inside a uh, crafting grid just like this. And uh, depending on how busted it is, it will take uh, more and more turbine blades to fix. So you can just put it inside here, and you can pull it right out there. And voila, it's fixed. You can put it right back in here, and uh, you can keep that thing running. Okay, so there we go you can repair these things, okay? So that's the steam turbines or multi-blocks. They're really expensive to make, uh, but in the end, you can get a constant 400 EU per tick out of your boilers, which is a little bit more than the steam engines will um, provide you with, which we will talk about right now. Let's go ahead and uh, bang through the recipes real quick for all these. They're pretty easy. Gold nuggets, glass, piston, and two gold-plated gears, which are a little bit different than probably what you're used to if you haven't played Railcraft before, and that's just some gold nuggets and a stone gear. Uh, for the commercial steam engine, you're going to require some iron gears, a piston, and some iron plate. Now, this is because I have Greg Tech installed, and uh, it's probably only going to require iron in normal versions if you don't have Greg Tech installed. And finally, the industrial steam engine is going to require three steel plate and two steel gears, which require four steel ingots each and again um, it's probably going to be steel ingots if you don't have greg tech installed let's take a look at the hobby steam engine real quick it's going to require um, one of two things either steam or coal right now it's being powered off coal and when it's being powered off coal and when it has a redstone signal applied to it it can produce up to 1.6 mj per tick if i were to go ahead and hook this up to steam here we go and it can be directly from a boiler or it can be uh via Tesseract or whatever. I have a little tiny boiler right here. It's going to jump up to 2 mj per tick, okay? And it's going to tell you how much steam it's got here, what the temperature is, and it will explode if you don't have water, so make sure you have water. Um, the mj, which kind of hovers around there all the time, um, and a place to manually dump water over here. So that's the hobbyist steam engine. Um, they're pretty neat. You can They're, they're really easy to use, right? Um, when you start out, you can just slap a really simple um, build craft pump onto there and uh, a couple of them will run a quarry even though it'll take forever um, but they're pretty good little engines next we have the commercial steam engine which is uh, far simpler this machine will only take steam and it will produce 4 mj per tick so uh, I have steam provided by a tesseract right here it's being piped directly in you can use crappy uh, build craft pipes or you can use liquidux um, you can put it directly adjacent to a boiler um, or some such thing of that nature and again these um, engines will not operate without a redstone signal. You'll also notice as we take a look at the industrial steam engine, which is capable of putting out 8 mj per tick and only with steam, that uh, despite the fact that I have a constant st uh, supply of steam going into this engine, it shows nothing in here. It will only accept steam if it has a redstone signal applied. And uh, once it reaches the halfway point, you're going to notice a big jump in power there. And uh, we are going to crank all the way up to 8 mj per tick. Now, how many of these can you slap onto a full-sized high-pressure boiler? Well, I do have the answer for you, and we're going to compare it to the steam turbine that we just talked about. There we go, 8 mj per tick. Um, at 11 steel per industrial steam engine, and um, at 18 industrial steam engines, that's going to get you the uh, maximum amount of uh, engines that the boiler can supply at once. Um, it's going to take 198 total steel for a max size high pressure boiler. So to make 18 industrial steam engines, 198 steel, and that is maintenance free. And that's the important factor between the two blocks here that despite the fact you're going to get a static 400 EU per tick for the turbine, as long as the blades are intact and repaired, um, it's going to cost to keep 
maintaining those rotor blades and it's going to be a pain in the butt to keep taking them out. If you uh, are willing to take the hit, you can keep uh, static 345 U per tick and just go ahead and use the engines, okay? And we're going to take a look at a few different ways that we can Oops, excuse me, that we can use these engines because there are a lot of different things that you can do with them. Um, here I have a very similar setup to the one you just saw. We're producing 400 EU per tick. And uh, maybe just for uh, ha ha's, I will go ahead and show you what happens when I attach another steam turbine here. Okay, we're gonna, we have some rotors, going to put them in there. This won't produce power unless it's hooked up to something, so we're going to wire it directly into there. It's going to jump up. Okay, and we're going to get um, 400 from this line because these two are connected, an extra uh, 200 from this line. And now uh, we're going to notice that the steam inside of here is going to start dropping and it's going to take approximately 1 minute and 53, 54 seconds to get all the way down to this level here, at which point all three of these are going to dip far below 100% and you're only going to get the 400 EU per tick. So that's just a really quick demonstration of what I was talking about earlier. Um, this is just to demonstrate that you can just store your steam inside of these uh, big steel tanks. This holds 3.2 million. We learned about steel tanks in a couple episodes ago in that tutorial over there. Make sure you check it out if you don't know how to make those. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at a few setups that I have here using the industrial steam engines on top of uh, max size high pressure boiler tanks. Um, there's a few things you're going to have to keep in mind when you're attaching these engines um, to your high pressure boilers because there are right ways and there are wrong ways. And uh, there are little tiny quirks that could uh, possibly happen to you and you might not know why it's happening. One thing you want to make sure is that you have all nine um, liquid ducts um, connected to your high pressure boiler tank um, and try not to have them actually let, let me show you a better example of that a little bit later on. Um, these are all working fine and it has 18 engines on here and I'm gonna throw a curveball in the uh, equation here in a second. Um, this is an example of kind of what not to do. Um, I have the steam engines pasted directly onto the boiler, and you can see how this one's not really quite there, and it's it's kind of dropping the steam. Same thing with this one back here. And eventually, th these are going to cool down a little bit. It's going to take a long time, but it's going to it's going to happen, and um, you're not going to get the full power out of here. So make sure you use your nine liquid ducts and then separate it from the boiler. So that's I guess the point that I was trying to make right there. So don't put them right on the boiler, even though it's it's more compact and you use less liquid duct, um, it's going to cause problems. One other thing that's going to cause problems, and that's kind of the reason why the, these two engines are only half full, is because this liquid duct here, um, since it's only one piece of pipe, it's sharing its output with both this engine and this engine. So it can only put out, I think, 40 um, millibuckets per tick to each engine, and so it will not keep them full. Um, there's going to be another problem with this later, and this is eventually, again, going to cool down. Um, so just try to avoid this. Don't put them right on there. Um, you may be able to find a way to make it work, and if you can, then uh, more power to you. Let's go ahead and whoops, make a day. Um, here's an 18 engine, 18 industrial steam engine um, set up here. And the problem with 18 engines is that eventually, and uh, by eventually I mean it's going to take hours and hours and hours to happen, but it will happen this is not going to be able to keep up with all 18. And you can see that um, in contrast with this 17 engine rig, and this is just redneck cable I have supplying a redstone signal to all these engines. Um, this rig 17 engines, this is 18, and you're going to be able to see a really slight difference. These have only been running for a little while like this. Um, the total steam here is ticking at around 145 um, or 6 as its max, and going down to 2 or 1, 141 to 146. And this one is a 17 engine, and this is staying right at uh, 140, looks like 146 to 151 it's bumping back up to. And this is going to maintain itself constantly. It's never going to run out of steam, as opposed to an 18 engine rig, which will um, take a very long time for it to happen, but it will happen. Maybe if you're clever, you can time it right so that uh, um, only every so often that 18th engine goes off. Now, I'm not going to go ahead and revise any of my numbers over there, really, but that's just something to keep in mind. Um, 17 engines will always be sustained. 18 engines eventually will run out, and it'll eventually reach this halfway point. And as you saw in the last video, um, the power is going to start flickering. Okay, um, that's basically it. You can set these up any ways you want. You can put your steam engines way far away from your uh, boiler; it doesn't really matter. 
Um, just to give you an example about how powerful these things are, I've wired them all into uh, one rig here, and I'm getting upwards of, looks like I'm reaching 1.5 at my maximum, 1.5 EU per tick, and around 590 something MJ per tick, okay? Got 439 million energy in that box, uh, which is a lot. So these are really powerful machines. Don't forget, you can also um, hook them up to the steam converter from the power converters mod. Just make sure that you go ahead and use a couple steam converters if you have a max size boiler and that you uh, configure your liquidux correctly and don't put any little weird things like this that will cause the whole system to, to bug out on you in there. All right, so that's it for this episode. Um, stay tuned for more. I'm not sure how far I'm going with this series. I'm not sure how deep I'm going to get into um, as far as the tracks and the switches and all that stuff. Um, I find that fairly impractical, but maybe you want to see it. I'm not sure. Let me know in the comments. Um, that's it for this tutorial. Check out um, all of our social media outlets uh, listed here. And as always, guys, stay poised.